parts of speech. Verbs. Remember, a verb is a word that describes an action, event, or state of being. The three main types of verbs are action, linking, and helping. This video will focus on helping verbs. Helping verbs can be very confusing to the English learner as they look the same as linking verbs or can be the same words, but they play a very different role. The most important thing to remember with helping verbs is that they are helping a verb. So please join in and follow along. Sentences require a main verb, but sometimes a helping verb is needed to clarify the main verb. Helping verbs are important for specific tenses, structures and ideas. Removing them can make a sentence sound basic and simple. Verb phrases. Verb phrases are created by combining helping verbs with main verbs. The main verb always comes last in a phrase. Helping verb plus main verb equals verb phrase. Yay! Common helping verbs. In this video, you will learn the most used helping verbs and how to use them. You will learn that helping verbs are used to form verb tenses. The tense of a verb informs us when the action took place, whether it was in the past, present, or future. There are four groups of helping verbs. To be, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, and been. To have, have, has, had, and having. To do, do, does, and did. Modal, can, could, may, might, shall, will, would, should, and must. Progressive tenses. In a previous video lesson, we learned that to be can be a linking verb, but here it's a helping verb in progressive tenses, formed by adding ing to the end of the main verb. Present progressive. I am writing this book. Am plus writing equals verb phrase. Past progressive. It was raining, so we couldn't go to the beach. Was plus raining equals verb phrase. Passive voice. The verb to be can be used in passive voice, which joins the forms of to be with verbs ending in ed or en. Make sure all your chores are completed by Friday. Ah, R plus completed equals verb phrase. That book was written by me. Was plus written equals verb phrase. Perfect tense. The verb to have is used with verbs ending in ed and en to form perfect tenses, which are not perfect, but are named as such. Two examples are rained and stolen. Present perfect. It has rained for many days now and everything is turning mouldy. Ew. Has plus rained equals verb phrase. Past perfect. We didn't believe the thief had stolen her money until he was gone. Yippee! Woo! Yeah! Had plus stolen equals verb phrase. Questions. To do serves several vital functions unlike to be and to have, which are used as part of verb tenses. One of its functions is to form questions where the noun or pronoun splits the phrase. Do you know where you are going? Hmm. Do plus no equals verb phrase. You, a pronoun, splits the verb phrase. Negative statements. To do also helps to form not statements, that is, 
negative statements. Here, the word not will also split the verb phrase. I do not know where she is. Have you seen her? <coughs> do plus no is a verb phrase. Not is an adverb. The word not, being an adverb, splits the verb phrase. Some clues. Remember not is an adverb and is not part of the verb phrase. Didn't and doesn't are contractions of did not and does not. Emphasis. You can use to do as an emphatic verb to clarify or intensify the main verb. Yes, I do know how to drive. There may have been confusion about whether you know how to drive. The helping verb do emphasizes that you know how to drive. I did pay for this week's rent. Here, to do is in the past tense, suggesting that the rent has already been paid. Take note, it is not possible to use the emphatic tense for future events because you cannot emphasize something that has not yet occurred. Modal verbs, sometimes called modal auxiliaries, can, could, will, would, should, must, may, might, and shall. The verbs mentioned here indicate a person's capability, potential, authorization, intention, duty, or requirement. I can play soccer. I can accomplish the task. I could play soccer. It is possible that I can play it. I will play soccer. In the future, it is my intention. I would play soccer. I'm willing to play subject to conditions. I should play soccer. I am obligated to do it. I must play soccer. It is essential. I may play soccer. The word may means permission or possibility to play. I might play soccer. Using might instead of may suggests uncertainty. I shall play soccer. Shall is more commonly used in the UK instead of will for the first person to express future action. Are you having some difficulty with verb phrases? Okay, here's a clue. Rearranging words into a declarative sentence helps you to find the verb phrase. Change the sentence around like this. Are you coming to my graduation? Two. You are coming to my graduation. Now you should be able to see the verb phrase. <laughs> helping verbs can only be selected from the approved list of helping verbs. Any other words cannot function as helping verbs. From a practical standpoint, it would be valuable to memorize these groups. To be, am, are, is, was, were, be, being, been. To have, have, has, had, having. To do, do, does, and did. Modal, can, could, may, might, shall, will, would, should, and must. Well, have you memorized them yet? Game on, let's test your knowledge with a game. Floaters. In this game, you will have five seconds to identify the whole verb phrase in each sentence, which includes the main verb. Do you think you are ready for such a skill? Okay then, here's the rules. One, a sentence will float up from the bottom 
as it rises to the top, you need to pick out the verb phrase. Two, if the sentence gets to the top without finding the verb phrase, you must play the game again. But watch out for those annoying fish. A quick test. Are you ready? Round one. How did you go? Thank you for coming along. For further lessons, advice, help, tips and a free newsletter, visit www.mykindofenglish.com. Hello. Is this my kind of English? Yes. Aha. That's right. I really would like to start taking lessons with you. Well, what are you waiting for? Give us a call. <laughs>